Hey guys, how are you? All right, so this is an idea that happened because of a friend of mine who needs to wear a medical device almost 24 hours. And I hope that this comes in handy for other of others of you who are likewise um, restricted um, to your movements because you have to carry something around with you, whether it is a blood glu glucose monitor, um, in my friend's case, a TENS machine. Um, there are certain medical device, cardiac medical devices you might have to carry around with you. This pattern could be easily adapted. Now, this pattern was created for a TENS machine that measures four and a half inches tall by three inches wide and about one inch deep with a wire coming out of the top, FYI. So, um, if your device is bigger or smaller, you're going to need to adapt it to fit that. You're going to need some outer fabric, some lining fabric, some Velcro, some kind of a ring. This is a rectangular ring I just happen to have in my stash. You could use a D-shaped ring. You can find these in the Notions department of your fabric store um, near where they have all the belt making and belt repair supplies. You'll also need some interface interfacing and my current favorite is SF101 by Pellon that is a uh, woven interfacing and it um, really moves really well with the fabric um, besides giving it body. My Joann's happen to be sold out of it on the bolt by the yard. I can only get these like one yard packs, which sucks, but anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna go have to go um, to a different fabric store and see if I can get some more of it. Um, so, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the waist piece. Now, you wanna cut the waist piece the size of your waist or wherever on your hips or waist that you wanna wear the device, plus about uh, six to eight inches overlap so you can pull it um, tight and cinch it. Alright, so in this case we are going to cut our piece 53 inches long by about four and a half inches tall. Now this fabric is only 44 inches so I'm going to cut two pieces that are four and a half inches tall and then piece them together to make the length that I need. I'm going to line, this is the outer fabric, this is my current favorite one. I'm, I'm using what I have in my stash for my friend. This is a prototype, but that being said, if you're watching this, then the prototype worked. So, <laughs> there's that. Um, and this is a cactus fabric from Hobby Lobby. So, I'm going to use my rotary cutter and my um, cutting mat on my table and my large plastic ruler. One, two, three, four and a half. It makes cutting really easy. You could adjust the thickness of this piece to be thinner or wider. This is going to be the belt portion of the bag. So if you want a thinner belt, just adjust this to be thinner for you. That'll work. Then I'm going to need <clears throat> a piece for the pocket that is 10 inches by 5 inches. Let's put this this way, hold on. Yeah, that's better. Only I want the other side because I don't want to have to mess with the selvage which is that white part on the edge of the fabric, and this side doesn't have that printed piece. It's the finished edge. This one has the finished edge, but it's printed with the same cactus print, so I'm good with that. So for this, I'm going to measure. Helps if the roller's going the correct way. So we want a piece. I'm going to use some tailor's chalk to measure 10 inches by... Yeah, five inches. Okay. So first we'll cut this one. 
line up my marks with the edge of the ruler. <clears throat> okay, you have a piece like this. Then I need one more piece for a loop to hold the bag onto the belt. And for that piece, I'm going to cut it three inches by six inches. <clears throat> <laughs> that doesn't want to stay. Okay, so cut those out of the outer pretty fabric and then also you want to cut them out of your lining fabric. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be okay, right back. I've got all my fabric pieces cut. Now you need to cut one piece for each of these out of the interfacing and fuse the interfacing per the package instructions to the wrong side of your pretty fabric. Okay, you got that? All right, I'll, I'm gonna do all that. I'll be right back. I should back. stop and say that if you want a little flap or a tab to close the bag your device is gonna be in, you're gonna need a second three by six inch strip from the outer, the inner, and the inner facing. Okay, we've got all of our inner facing fused to the wrong side of our fabric. So now the first thing we're gonna do is put our two pieces for our belt together. In the case of this particular fabric, it's directional, meaning the design goes in a definite direction one way or the other. So I need to make sure I put both pieces going in the right direction and then right sides together. And I'm gonna use about a quarter inch seam or the edge of my presser foot as my guide. And I'm gonna sew this outer piece together. I'm gonna to do the same with the lining. And then I'm going to take this part, which is going to be the pocket, and I'm going to sew, I'm going to put the short ends together. And then I'm going to sew again with like a quarter inch seam down the folded side, this from here to here, and then on the other side, making sure to go backwards and forwards at the beginning of the end of the stitches. And I'm going to do that for the um, outer part of the pocket and the inner part of the pocket. On these, <laughs> I'm going to sew one of them straight down the long sides. Again, right sides of the fabric together. I'm gonna to sew straight down the long sides, leaving either end open. On the other one, we are gonna go down one long side, across one short side, and up the other long side. And I know that sounds really confusing, but I'm gonna do the stitching and I'll show you when I come right back. Okay, for the belt pieces, I sewed along this edge to join the two pieces so we have a piece that's long enough for what we need. Now my D-ring is smaller than how this um, wide the belt is going to be so I'm going to have to narrow down either end um, and I'll show you how I do that. I would recommend if you could to get a ring that's big enough um, for your however wide you want your belt to be. but. I don't want it to be too narrow because it's got to hold the weight of the TENS machine for my friend. Anyway, I sewed this one and the lining, same way. Here are the pocket pieces. Now you can see the two cut ends here. So I've made sort of a pocket, right? She sewed up either side. I did the same to the lining. On these two smaller three by six inch pieces, this one I sewed into a tube. And this one I sewed all the way around and I made like a pocket. Okay, so I'm going to clip my corners where appropriate 
to close to the stitches but without cutting the stitches. That's important to remove the bulk where you can. You get a nicer looking corner. And then I'm going to turn these pockets and tubes right side out. Use something to push your corners. I, I just use an old knitting needle. Actually, I take that back. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna push the corners on this out yet. I take that back. Not in the pocket. Don't push the pocket out. Leave the pocket. We're gonna do something else to that. But push, push out the one that's going to be um, the tab to hold your bag shut, to hold your device in your bag. That one you do need to turn right side out. And the tube. If the um, instructions here seem a little bit um, disjointed and like I'm making them up on the fly, that's because I am. <laughs> All right, so we're going to turn this one right side out. We're going to turn this tube one right side out. <coughs> and I'm going to go press these, and I'm going to press the seam um, I'm going to go press these so they're flat, and I'm also going to press the seam on the belt pieces. Where's my seam? I'm going to press these so that the seam is open flat. All right, I'm going to go do all that, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're all pressed and ready to go. So now I'm going to take our tube piece, and I'm going to top stitch along this finished edge on either side. I'm also going to take our flap piece, and I'm going to top stitch down one side, uh, across and up the other side. About an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Oop, ran out of bobbin thread. Did you hear that? That's what that noise is generally, or it just got unthreaded or un tangled or something. So I'm going to pull the loose threads out and clip them off. Okay. And let's take a look and see what's going on down there. I don't know. Just having a little conniption fit. <laughs> All right. I don't want to cut too many of the mistakes out because I want you guys to all know I make mistakes with sewing, with painting, with our journal, whatever it is, we all make mistakes. You just have to figure out how to work past it, work with it, make it work in whatever you're doing. Make sure you always go backwards and forward at the beginning and um, end of any stitching to lock your stitches in. You notice how I just kept going without cutting the thread? That's a trick I learned when I used to actually do sewing for a living and did a lot of uh, mass um, sewing. It does have a name. I can't remember right now what it's called. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe one of you remembers. Okay, so now we're going to cut our pieces apart and trim our threads.
on the tube one I'm trimming all the off all the extra hairy bits um, because and the extra interfacing that's hanging out you really want it to be neat and clean for attaching it to the bag now if you don't have a free arm sewing machine then you might want to do this part before you sew the sides up on your bag. I have a free arm sewing machine so I um, am not too worried. I've done it both ways. But not only do I have a free arm sewing machine, but the weight of the tens I think might be a little heavy, so I want to make sure that you have both layers of fabric and the interfacing to hold it onto the belt. So before we turn our pockets right side out, I'm going to make sure that I just finger press the fabric down here to get a little crease in the fabric. And then I'm going to take the bottom and I'm going to match up that fold with the seam. And I am going to take a little, I'm going to do some stitching, well you can't see, I'm going to stitch right across here to make the bottom a little bit flat. I'm putting the point of the fold at the 5 8 inch mark. Make sure again that you go backwards and forwards. So again we're, oh, there's a stray thread, um, we're going to put a, a finger press then we're going to open it like this and we're going to push down the seam to meet up with that fold. And this point right here is what I'm going to have at the 5 8 inch mark on the base of my sewing machine. And then I'm going to just sew straight across here. And I'm going to do it to both corners of both bags. Now if your machine's a little taller, a little wider, you're going to have to adjust the measurement for your pocket to accommodate that machine. You want to take the height and double it plus the width, add an inch, and then you want to take the um, width and the depth and double it and add an inch. Ah, uh, no, double, no, double it, just add an inch. And hopefully I've done my measurements right, otherwise we're in deep doo-doo when I have to do this again. We'll find out in a minute. Okay, so trim all your threads, cut your two bag pieces apart. And then now you can turn the outer fabric one right side out. Push out the corners. Okay, so I have now I have this. Now, if I've done it right, this should be about three inches by four and a half inches by one inch. So let's see. <laughs> one, two, three, four and a half, and one, two, three plus extra. There's a little extra in there, so it should fit. Hopefully, it won't be too tight. Hopefully, I'm going to put the lining fabric inside of there. Yeah, it's like three and a quarter inches wide. Okay, so now what I want to do is I need to put the belt loop on the back. So I need to get this down as flat as possible. And then I need to put the belt loop here, center back. And I need to then flip it over and sew it again. This is not the bell loop, this is the bell loop. Yeah, and then flip it over and sew it again down here at the bottom. So to do that, I'm gonna take the free arm, the this part of the sewing machine base off, which will release the free arm part of my machine. Needs a good cleaning. <clears throat> which may or may not be easier, I don't know, we'll see. I don't know that that is easier actually.
So I'm going to try it this way. I really, it's going to be fiddly, but I really want that strap to be through all the layers of fabric. Let's see. You know, if I made this differently, this pocket, it might work better. See if we can get it on there. Yeah, I really do want it to be through all the layers. So I'm going to bunch it up like this and I'm going to put it carefully. Just go slow, don't go fast, making sure that. You don't have any wrinkles under there. Go backwards and forwards. Attach it down. You could, like I said, put this on first before um, you sew your pocket up. And that, for some of you who are new to sewing, that might be easier. I'm going to go a couple stitches off the loop, lift up my needle, turn the bag around, and I'm pulling this over what I just stitched and pulling it underneath the presser foot. And then I'm going to go back the way I came. pulling the underneath fabric out of my way so I can make sure I don't stitch through something I don't want to stitch through. And doing it this way gives you an extra row of stitching on here again to hold your device in place firmly and securely. Okay. There we go. Hopefully there's no like mistakes under there. I don't think there is. So I'm going to trim all my threads. Always trim all your threads. And then when you're done, it should look like that. Now that's not perfectly straight. I could have done a better job at making that straight, but that's okay. So now before we go any farther, I need to put some Velcro on there, which I have to find. Holy cow. We'll use this one. So this is sew-in Velcro. <clears throat> I need just a little piece, about two inches long. We're going to need more of that, so don't go too far with your Velcro. I'm going to take the soft side and I'm going to sew it to the flap this way. threads. Then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to sew it to the bag down about a half an inch from the top, again vertically. Pulling the uh, back side of the bag away from the layers that I'm stitching through so I only stitch through the front of the bag and not the back of the bag. If you want it perfectly straight you probably should pin it or baste it in place. Again, you can sew this on before you put the bag together. That is easier. 
I would put a piece of um, extra piece of fabric behind it um, between the layers to make it um, just a little stronger to hold your device, especially if your device is heavy. Well, that doesn't sound right. <coughs> So now your bag should look like this. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to, I think I'm going to use my wonder clips. I might need to pin it though. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to turn the outer fabric down about a quarter of an inch and then also the inner fabric and match them up and put a clip. And do this um, all the way around the bag. Look like that when you've got it all clipped or pinned. I have these clips. I've had them actually a long time, so I should use them. <laughs> um, now, before we sew anything, we are going to tuck our belt loop um, in um, into the top here. I'm debating how to do that. We might want to just do it this way, which actually would work. And also, we're going to put the flap this way, which would also work. And I'm going to position them, and then I'm going to adjust my clips to hold it in place. And then I'm going to sew all the way around this edge, sewing the loop and the flap into place while I'm doing it. I'm going to be about an eighth of an inch away. Then I'm going to flip this flap up, and I'm going to go back and top stitch that again a second time. I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay, now, honestly, assembling the bag is going to be the most difficult part of this project because getting the bag under the machine so that you can attach the, I still have more threads, so you can attach the Velcro, the belt loop, hem the top edge and that sort of thing is the most fiddly. Again, you can attach the Velcro and the belt loop before you assemble the bag. You still have the part of attaching the flap. So um, just take your time and go slow. Make sure to pull the fabric away um, so that you're only stitching through where you want. Sew a few stitches, adjust your fabric, pull it away so that the needle's only going through where you want it to and you're not getting bunches of fabric. It is all straight stitches. Um, but then once you're done, you have a little bag, if nothing else, you have a little bag with a belt loop on the back that you could attach to a regular belt. In my friend's case, she doesn't wear those kind of clothing uh, items, so I need to make her a belt that will fit in here. Now, I do think I probably cut this one too wide, not only too wide, um, it could be thinner for the machine, but too definitely too wide for the D-ring I have, which is the only one I have. So let's see what we can do about that. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two long strips and we're going to put them right sides together and we're going to sew all the way down one of the long sides making sure to go backward and backward and forward at either end. Okay, so I've done that and now what I was just doing was I was taking and I did like a quarter inch seam on one side and I was folding out down about a half an inch from the other side and then seeing how it fit over the belt loop and it's kind of wide. <laughs> so, you know, if you're using materials that you have at home, you're going to have the same issue. So yeah, so I'm going to cut it an inch narrower this way. So instead of 53 inches long by four and a half inches wide, I'm going to make it three and a half. 
So this, you can do, you know, again, do your adjustments. You could make the bag bigger instead of doing this part. Um, but you could just cut this down. I could do a really big seam allowance and um, just tuck it inside, but I don't want to do that. Where did my rotary cutter go? Oh, there it is. Okay. So now if I do this and this, that's a better width to fit through the bag. And that'll work for the D-ring. It's still a little too big for the D-ring. So what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to take the two ends and line them up, hopefully. And we are going to narrow them just a bit. Taper, I should not narrow. Taper, there you go, taper. So I'm going to line all the edges up together. I'm going to try this to do this all at once. I'm going to use kind of the seam here where I piece that extra piece on as my guide. And I'm going to narrow it by a good another inch. line up my fabric on the cutting board. I've got the end of the ruler here by the seam up at the top and then I'm narrowing it down to like about an inch over here on this side and then we'll just cut like that. So then you'll have it shaped like this on the end and that'll make it very much nicer putting the D-ring on. So the problem with that is now I have to sew this edge again, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to re-sew. I'm going to start back here where it's flat. I'm going to re-sew this edge. I'm going to go down one short end and all the way down this other long end to the other side and down this short end, but I'm going to leave a like four inch space in the middle so I can turn it right side out. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right now back. Before I turn it right side out, again, we're going to clip the extra off our corners to remove some bulk as close as you can get to the stitches without cutting your stitches. Do it on either end. The other place you might want to cut some bulk at is where we had to piece our, our pieces together to make it long enough. So I would re recommend coming in here and cutting this um, like a semicircle shape out of there to get rid of some of the bulk of that seam allowance. Okay. Now we're going to turn it right side out. Again, I use a knitting needle for some of this and the this part is great for pushing out like the bulk. And then the pointy end is good for pushing out the corners.
do both sides and then take it back to your iron and give it a good press. Okay, now I'm going to top stitch all the way around all the sides of the belt. And then I'm going to take our D-ring and I'm going to put it on, well, it's a rectangular ring. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put it on one end and fold it over like this and sew it down. I'll be right back. Okay. There's going to be a lot of pressure tech, um, theoretically on this ring. So go backwards and forwards on the stitching a few times. And then how this should work, how it should work is this way. Now I did, again, I did plain fabric because it's what I had. Um, you could do patterned fabric on both sides if you wanted. All right, so I need to, so all of our Velcro is gonna be on the same, oh, you can't even see me, hold on. All of our Velcro is gonna be on the same side. So how this is gonna work is this is gonna go through the D-ring and depending on what mobility issues you are having, you could do it this way or you could just put pretty fabric on both sides. I didn't do that, but she's not really a cactus person anyway, so <laughs> this is just a sample. Um, so you want to have all the Velcro is going to go on this side. So the first thing I want to do is figure out um, her waist measurement, um, how tight I can pull this. So about there, so that's the tightest that it would go. So I want to put one little piece of Velcro here and then a longer strip here in case she wants to tighten or loosen it over time. I want it to be adjustable. So I'm going to take some of my Velcro. But generally what I do with these is I take the whole thing and it together the right way. It's less fiddly that way. But when you get it out of the package, it's not like this. There we go. All right. So I'm going to cut. I'm just trying to decide if I want to put two pieces or one piece. I think I'm going to just put one. I'm going to cut kind of a long one. Oops. not really the right scissors for that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one piece here and the other piece here facing each other. Now the other thing too is if you have really sensitive skin and that's one of your issues that you're having, you definitely don't want the Velcro on the back side and you probably want to use something like flannel on the inside. Something This is cotton which is soft but if you have sensitive skin or you're having skin issues, use something even softer like a really soft cotton flannel. Alright, so I'm going to pin, this time I'm going to pin instead of using the clips. I'm going to position this here. Let's see. Maybe out more. So I'm going to position it where I want it and stick a pin. And then I'm going to take this one and do the same thing. Then I'm going to take it out of the D ring and I'm going to sew both of those down. Once you have the Velcro on, you can put your bag on it and put it around your waist and attach it securely. And then you don't have to worry about where your TENS machine is. I have an iPhone 7 and it measures, how big is it? This is six by two and three quarters and I have it in a charging case. So it's a good half inch to three quarters of an inch wide and fairly heavy. And I could get in here. It's a little, it's taller because this is taller. So her, her thing is only four and a half, um, but it fits. So there you go. Um, 
You know, when it, you have it around your waist, it's not going to go anywhere. But anyway, you guys get the idea. So there you go. I hope that gives you something to think about just because I found a more thread. Something I never do. <laughs> But there you have it. It's got my cell phone in it, which is heavier and bigger than her TENS machine is going to be, or your device maybe, um, and it fits just fine. And it's very comfortable, by the way. It's not squeezing my hips too tight. So if you have pain issues, skin issues, this should work for you. Just because you have to wear a medical device or carry something around with you all the time doesn't mean it has to be in an ugly bag or just click to your pants so that your pants are falling off. So here you go. I hope that that gives you some ideas of what you can do. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments below here on YouTube. Um, you can always join my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, and ask them there. And don't forget the most important thing. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.